Sadly, great sports cars are losing their market share. Yes, the marketplace is shrinking to make room for SUVs, electrification, as they're being mandated now by 2030, 2035, that's all you'll be able to buy. And for true car enthusiasts like yourself or myself, we still enjoy the drive of a good old fashioned internal combustion engine wrapped up in a phenomenal sports car because we love the driving experience. There's nothing like it. So if you two want to get your hands on what's left of some of the best sports cars on the planet today, definitely check out the list of five amazing sports cars that I'm going to share in this video. And if you move quickly, you can probably still get your hands on one and join the true ranks of the sports car enthusiast club. Let's get into it now. Life's too short to drive boring cars. The first one on my list is actually this great little hot rod behind me here. It's a Mazda Miata or MX-5. Back in 1989, it came out. It won numerous awards for some of the best sports cars available on the market. Clearly, it was an extension of the British and Italian sports cars or roadsters, if you will, from many, many moons ago. The key difference is because this car was and still built in Japan, the quality control is top shelf, reliability is second to none, and the fun factor is all of everything you would expect. What we're looking at here is a second generation Mazda Miata. And as you can see, it's got great little wheels on there, like there. Great little extra ground effects slapped on top of there. Beautiful little basic style of headlights, but nothing too extravagant and it gets the job done. It's a sporty little offering right there. Notice little hood accents on there. Beautiful mirrors, simple, but st stylish and effective. Here you got a good old vinyl top roof. And yes, you have a glass rear window. Even the early generation Porsche Boxsters used a plastic window that were prone to breaking, splitting, and becoming a pain in the rump. This here is glass and it's heated. It's great. Here you have a great little tail light assembly and one little pea shooter exhaust tip right there. Circle around, we're talking about a Miata here. Simple little antenna, gas filler. Everything is basic and simple. Interior is uncluttered, simple, basic, and well wearing. These are truly amazing cars and actually I didn't realize how great they were until a few years after they were starting production, I came across a used one and the person actually, all they did was they converted the suspension to a track setup. They put some coilovers, they made it ready for the racetrack. Now the engine was still relatively underpowered, but that was okay. I drove this car, I was literally grinning from ear to ear like a Cheshire cat because it was so fun in the corners. I kept looking for every corner to just throw it into the corner and just chuck it around because it was just so entertaining. Also, we get that short shifter when you drive the manual versions. Of course, you can also get the automatic if you don't feel like rowing your own gears. And the latest engines vary from a 1.6 liter supercharged four to a two liter supercharged four and a couple different variations of those. There's also been numerous different engine sizes throughout and capacities. So the options were abound, but what isn't an option is reliability. These have always been very robust, very reliable. And the worst thing you'd ever worry about was a leaky roof seal that may let a little bit of water trickle in the sides. Other than that, mechanically, these cars were bulletproof. They will literally last forever and truly one of the most fun driving experiences you can ever dream of. And the next one on my list is this beautiful little hot rod and it's great car, honestly, for the budget minded. I truly love these kind of cars, basic, simple, fun to drive and yes you can row your own gears because you can get a six-speed manual or a six-speed automatic depends on your flavor and your tastes but it's a great car lightweight and it's old school by very function the fact that this is a two plus two means you can haul your friends in the back if you need to and it's quite practical in general but let's take a quick look around this little hot rod it is a thing of beauty and for a mere thirty-one thousand dollars, this represents huge bang for your buck so what is this it's a Subaru, that's right. What we're looking at here is a great little offering from Subaru with beautiful vents on the side, beautiful mirrors. How about soft touch handles? And look at those rocker panels, looks very aggressive and sporty. Oh, I love those wheels, absolutely gorgeous. And the rear tail lights are LEDs and you got this little strip along the back, gives it a little flavor, absolutely beautiful car. Here we're talking about the BRZ by Subaru. Of course, down below what we have are a couple of exhaust tips, beautiful touches, not the fake stuff that you see in a lot of modern day Benzes and Beamers. You also have a great little splitter along the bottom and an overall flare and a stance that makes this car look very, very sporty. Much more attractive than a lot of the other overdone cars on the market today. Beautiful little accents like that around the wheel wells. No sunroof here. That's all about keeping the weight down because it's a lightweight car. Great little headlights. I love that LED strip like that. And of course, a couple of projector lamps right there. Look at that, beautiful. Some great touches across the front of this car. 
This is a hot rod little car. I personally love these. So what does the interior look like? Very well put together, very well wearing, and this will definitely last the test of time. Love that manual gearbox, and that contrast stitching definitely gives it a touch of high flavor. But what is it about this car that makes it great? And why is this car on a list of sports cars when there's so many other great cars on the market? Well, let me explain. This car here actually has a four cylinder engine, 2.4 liter flat four, that's right, pancake, like a 911, flat four engine that makes about 228 horsepower and moves the sink very briskly down the road via the six speed transmissions and it's rear wheel drive, not all wheel drive, rear wheel drive. That's right, Subaru is known for their all-wheel drive systems and everybody's throwing all-wheel drive into their, sport, into their sports cars, SUVs, everything else these days. So it's refreshing to get a car that's a six-speed, rear-wheel drive, sporty, lightweight, and just honest. This is a good, honest car that's literally one of the best cars on the market today. How about the Toyota GR86? Yes, they share the same drivetrains. Amazing cars and definitely one that you need to consider if you don't have the huge budget for a new 911 or a Corvette, $31,000 gets you into a great little hot rod like this. And the next one right here is one of my personal favorites. I actually own one of these in F-Type R, and we're talking about the Jaguar F-Type in general. What we have here is a variety of different models. You can also get a V6 in the S. You can also get the SVR, which we see right here. And this is a 575 horsepower, five liter supercharged V8. Absolutely breathtaking. Makes the snarliest, most aggressive exhaust sounds you'll find anywhere on any stock vehicle today. Yes, you can quiet down to get out of your neighborhood and then you turn the, open the exhaust valves to just let it rip when you hit the freeway. These cars are absolutely amazing. Because there's very few cars like this anymore, this truly does hold a special place. The styling, the sex appeal, and of course the performance. Zero to 60, 3.3 seconds for the SVR like we're looking at right here. Nothing short of breathtaking. All-wheel drive, you need all-wheel drive because you need all four wheels clamping at the asphalt when that torque just kicks in and you're thrusted forward. These cars are a blast to drive. Doesn't matter, V6, V8, they're all great and they sound amazing. But there's also been some changes. And then we have the latest and greatest. This is a brand new Jaguar F-Type R right there, as you can see. Now this base R now actually has the older generation SVR powertrain. This has 575 horsepower from that five liters and it's supercharged as well. Absolutely gorgeous. Look at the calipers. Jaguar there, painted calipers. Sometimes you can get them red as well. In this case, nice piano gloss black wheels. Great little accents from this Jaguar. You've got the fold away mirrors and everything goes flush mount when you lock the door. Beautiful, love that rocker panel design of this F-Type here, gorgeous Jaguar. Of course, as I said, R. And there's another subtle change on the more recent version like we see right here. You'll notice this little bridge is an add-on. The older version did not have that. Of course, this pops up. You can either do with the key fob or through the dash or as well the button under here. And on top, you have this glass panel. Beautiful, look inside there. And the interior is nothing short of top shelf. You've got white contrast stitching on this beautiful black interior. Absolutely gorgeous car throughout. But this isn't just your big hulking S-Class or seven series BMW. No, this car is actually primarily constructed with aluminum shells. That's right, most of the fenders and body panels are made of, of aluminum just to shed some weight. Yes, this is not a heavy, fat Jaguar. This car is meant to go fast. And you get an eight-speed ZF automatic transmission powering this. That's right, it shifts almost as fast as a double clutch transmission. And it's also very intuitive in automatic mode. So you can pull the levers and the gears like you feel like you're an F1 car, or you could just sit back in the lap of luxury. But this makes some of the craziest noises has some of the best looking styling design and accents with the curves and the humps. You don't find cars like this anymore and you definitely won't. And sadly, Jaguar has elected to make this car disappear. So if you think you want to get into an F-Type like this, don't wait because there are not many left on the market. That's right, this car snubs the nose of electrified vehicles. The hell with SUVs. Yes, and even lesser sports cars eat this car's dust. These cars are insane. And here's a car that I do believe belongs on any driving enthusiast list right here. And we're talking about the Camaro, competitor for the Challenger and the Charger for Dodge and as well as the competitor for the Mustang. But I personally love the Camaro the best because I think it lives up to its sporting intentions a lot better than even the Chrysler products do. But let's take a quick look here. 
The modern Camaro is a great thing of beauty because why? You can get a 10-speed automatic transmission with overdrive that will satisfy many different driving styles. Rear-wheel drive definitely gives the driving enthusiast the perspective and the driving dynamics that you love, as well as there's so many different engine configurations you can get in these vehicles, and we'll talk about that in a second. Here we have the RS, of course by Chevy. This is the Camaro. Have you ever seen the movie Transformers? Well, need I say more? Great little styling cues on the front there. Of course, you've got a very aggressive front nose on these cars. Beautiful wheels. Here we got the Camaro badge just to commemorate the brand. Small mirrors, of course, is more retro style. And you even get a sunroof on this car. Small soft touch handles. And of course, I love the style and the design of the rear finish of these. How strong and aggressive does that look? I mean, we got these beautiful rear tail lights. We've got these foghorn real exhaust tips and even a bit of a lip with the tiny wing on the back just to give it a little extra sporting feel. How about the interior? Well, it's very difficult to see out the sides and the back because of the small porthole feeling. The window is actually very shallow in terms of overall height. So for some people, it's gonna feel very claustrophobic, but that's okay. That also gives it equally a very sporty look. But let's look inside. Beautiful interior. Certainly for a GM product, this is about as good as things can get. It's well styled, nicely detailed, great different textures on the seats, and you've got contrast stitching as well throughout. All the other electronic nannies and technology that you'll find in any other car does belong in a modern day Camaro. But the reason I really believe that this car does belong in a driving enthusiast garage is because, again, rear wheel drive. Yes, you can get the manual gearbox. Indeed, you can get the stick shift in this particular car if you want it. And there's a variety of different engines. You can get a turbo four cylinder engine, makes about 275 horsepower. Now you think that sounds a little mild and meager for a muscle car. And personally, that's not my engine of choice, but hey, different strokes for different folks. You can also get a V6 that makes about 335 horsepower. Then you can get 400 and change horsepower out of some of the more entry level V8 engines. But then the hot rod, and a friend of mine took me for a rip. He bought a brand new ZL1 1LE version of the Camaro, and it was nothing short of spectacular, let me assure you. His ZL1 actually had the 650 horsepower non dry sump engine, to, similar to what you find in the Corvette of the same era. 6.2 liter supercharged drivetrain just throws you back. He also had the big wing on the back, thinner glass, as well as a host of other lightning features. It had different racing slicks essentially ready for the racetrack. And it was a car that was very difficult to drive when the weather got ugly, but it truly is a dedicated track machine. He had to find himself swapping tires, which is okay, but it's a no compromise track car in the 1LE package. It is spectacular. That's personally the one I would drive, the stick shift ZL1. Now, if you think those are gonna hold value and if you think you're going to buy one for an investment, put away, wrap it up and bring it out in 30 years after the time machine opens up the gates on the other side and you're gonna make all this money, who knows? Maybe you will, maybe you won't. Regardless, suffice it to say, what I would suggest is get behind the wheel of one of these and I think you'll be pleasantly surprised at the true, relatively simple, relatively moderate technology buried in this car. In a world of all of this digital electronics you're finding in Teslas and modern day high-end SUVs and Range Rovers, this is a car that will entice you for a drive every single day of the week. And here's a car that's always been really near and dear to my heart. And some of you guys love the 911s and some of you don't, and that's okay. Personally, I think the 911 is literally one of the best sports cars ever made and still continues to be made. They literally have a car for every single buyer. They have the 911 naturally aspirated. If you go to certain older generations of the 911, you can row your own gears with a manual gearbox. Then they had them automatic and a Tiptronic. Then now recently they've upgraded to the PDK, which is their dual clutch transmission. You can get a Carrera, which is rear wheel drive. You can get a Carrera 4, which is all wheel drive. You get the S models, which bumps up the power. Turbos, GT3s, you can get everything depending on your budget and performance demands. But what we're looking at right here is literally one of my favorite 911s of all time. If you don't wanna go all big at bling with the GT3 RS, this is literally one of the cleanest examples and cleanest designs of a Porsche 911 right here. Let's take a look. I absolutely adore this car. This does everything right. We have essentially the simplest, simplistic of designs with this particular car. We don't have any big vents or any of that detail like in the GT3 RS. Look down in there, you have vents and you'll notice there's cooling rads in there. Of course, Porsche is all about form follows function and everything actually has a need and a function as opposed to a lot of other brands out there which fake it with fake vents and elements. Porsche does the real deal. Those are there for a reason.
Beautiful lights on the markers. Of course, we got headlight washers. Of course, beautiful new headlights on these particular cars. And we go down the side and you'll notice because this is a 4S, we're getting a little extra flare on the rear haunches. Looks very aggressive. And then here we have this ducktail, which harkens back to the RS models back in the 1970s. Absolutely beautiful homage to the older cars. We have a set of pipes there and another set of pipes there. So yes, quad exhaust tips on this particular car. The chrome, not sure I'm a lover of that, but it matches these beautiful wheels. And you'll notice red calipers tucked in behind these oversized rims. What about the inside? Well, you'll notice the highest quality of leather you'll find. Every detail is high quality. This interior will not fall apart in your hands. Porsche knows how to get put together a car. And on top of that, they have the double clutch transmission, which is the PDK, which provides lightning quick shifts on this car. And you literally cannot break these cars. Even with hard launches, Porsche has built such a robust transmission that it will literally last forever. Of course, you also have great finishes like this oversized glass panel on the roof, which makes it very inviting for the people inside the cabin, especially since a lot of the interiors tend to be very dark in a lot of these 911s. It does allow a fair amount of light inside there. But why Porsche has a special place for me is they've got such an intensive race heritage. You can still get a manual gearbox in certain up upscale models, for example, like the S and the GTS. Clearly, the car is designed for the driver at heart. There are a few cars out there that are literally this dialed in, but a Porsche 911 seriously has the performance driver in mind, and you can still daily drive most of these cars without them worrying about falling apart. For example, like driving a McLaren, those cars are very fragile. These cars, you can beat on them all day long, get in, get out daily to your office, and as well, take it autocrossing on the weekend. They are literally rough, tough, perform well, and are exceptionally great looking. And with all of that said, right there, check it out. Great video on vehicles that will likely last over 300,000 miles. Maybe you just need a daily commuter. That's going to help you with that next purchase. Hope to see each and every one of you on the next one. Catch you real soon. Bye-bye.